if you were to do a word association game to the average person and mention the word insulin, the usual answer would probably be diabetes. And that is actually makes that actually makes sense because diabetes mellitus, as the disease is called, consists of two different types of diseases. Oh, actually one disease, but two, let's say, subdivisions. Type 1 diabetes involves a complete destruction of the cells in the pancreas that manufacture and sy or synthesize insulin, known as the beta cells or the Isle of Langerhans cells. It's usually caused by an autoimmune reaction, something, in other words, the body's immune system destroys these particular cells, leaving a person with the inability to produce insulin. As such, type 1 diabetics have to use insulin the rest of their lives. Uh, the other type is called type 2 diabetes mellitus. used to be called adult onset diabetes because it usually showed up after the age of 40. However, uh, it's, it's now started to uh, show up in uh, kids as young as 12. There's a lot of reasons for that that are beyond the scope of this video. A lot of it has to do with physical inactivity and cons large consumption of processed carbohydrates. Uh, in any case, uh, I'm not going to be really talking about insulin in relation disease, to disease in this video. Uh, I'm going to try and make this a two-part video. And in this first part, I'm going to discuss uh, the dietary controversies related to insulin, uh, such as that related to a low-carbohydrate diet. Uh, you know, there. Uh, and in the second part, I will talk about some of the controversies of insulin as an ergogenic aid for use in bodybuilding at sports. Uh, there's a lot of myths and misconceptions about that in particular. I mean, I, I just right before I did this video, I did a little web search and I saw a couple of uh, blogs or websites that have articles on insulin. And among the things they say about insulin is that it's the most anabolic hormone in the body. Well, I'm going to discuss that and I'm going to tell you the truth about it. But let's get started here with this. Uh, first part related to diet. Uh, proponents of insulin, uh, the uh, proponents of the insulin makes you fat idea say that insulin is the prime regulator of fat storage and that when insulin levels are high, we store fat and when it drops to lower levels, fat cells release fat and we can then burn that fat with exercise, particularly aerobic exercise. <clears throat> aerobic exercise uh, makes greater use of fat as a fuel, <clears throat> excuse me, because of the greater oxygen intake and fat burns uh, in the presence of oxygen is much more efficient fat oxidation. Uh, they also say so these people also say uh, that insulin stimulates the appetite and it makes you feel tired so you don't want to exercise. Again, this is the people that, that claim that uh, insulin makes you fat. Since carbohydrates promote the greatest release of insulin, low-carb diets, according to these people, are the best diets for promoting fat, body fat loss, and if combined with a higher protein intake, it'll preserve lean mass and increase satiety. Now, satiety is uh, appetite suppression, and protein alone, it's important to note, protein alone has a pretty potent satiety effect. Uh, they've done studies where they've given increased amounts of whey protein, for example, has lowered appetite in subjects and allowed them to lose weight a little bit more efficiently while maintaining lean mass or muscle. Now those who oppose the insulin theory of obesity say that insulin itself is an innocent bystander in the obesity process and that insulin alone cannot make you fat in the absence of the ingestion of excess calories that exceed that used in physical activity. In other words, just having insulin in the body will not make you fat. You have to take in excess calories and then the insulin more or less converts those excess calories into body fat. The one thing you want to note about insulin, which is undeniable, is it, it is a storage hormone. It helps you store fuels. It helps you store carbohydrate as glycogen, and it helps you store fat as fat, <laughs> basically. It stimulates fat genesis or formation of, of fat in fat cells or lipocytes. I don't want to get too technical on this, but anyway... Uh, they say that uh, the people that oppose the notion that insulin alone is responsible for fat gains, they often note that there's another protein produced in the body called acylation-stimulating protein, or ASP, 
that can promote fat synthesis, fat synthesis in the absence of insulin. In other words, even without any insulin, this particular protein will stimulate body fat synthesis. What, they, what these uh, people don't tell you is that ASP, contrary to what they're saying, it does have a relationship with insulin. So right away, there's a little bit of an error there, you know. Okay, so as, as such, insulin alone is not responsible for fat gains. That's what they say. Insulin does, not, the, insulin does not only not make you hungry, but it actually suppresses appetite. That's what these people say. And there's some truth to that. Uh, for example, uh, one reason why people who consume an excess amount of, of uh, sugar fructose, they, they, one reason that they get fat from that, besides the fact that fructose has a tendency to be converted into liver triglycerides or fat very, very rapidly, but the other reason is because insulin doesn't initially cause a, I'm sorry, fructose doesn't initially cause an insulin release. And the lack of insulin release doesn't depress the appetite. So if you eat a large amount of fructose, like for example, high, pro, high fructose corn syrup, which is a processed form of fructose, not the natural fructose found in fruits, that type of uh, uh, processed fructose actually stimulates a craving for additional carbohydrates. And when you take in the additional carbohydrates and the additional calories, if you don't oxidize them through exercise or physical activity, then they can become body fat. But another point to, to mention is that protein, or more specifically amino acids, this is, a, a, by the way, this what I'm saying now is a point often voiced by those who say that insulin alone is not the cause of uh, excess body fat as the low carb, let's say, uh, camp says. But in other words, what these, uh, these uh, insulin doesn't make you fat proponents say is that they note, they note that protein, or more specifically amino acids, promote just as much or even more insulin release than does carbohydrates. And it's true, leucine, for example, which is probably the most potent of all amino acids in stimulating muscle protein synthesis, leucine alone uh, stimulates a, a, a huge amount, a fairly huge release of insulin, right? Uh, and, you know, but, but here's the problem with that theory. They, 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 they use it, they, they talk about the protein effect in stimulating insulin, but what they don't explain is why consuming a high protein intake rarely or ever produces a significant gain in body fat and is in fact associated with reduced body fat gains. I, I, I've been involved in exercise and the study of nutrition for five decades. And I've yet to meet a single person, not one, not a single person that ever got fat from eating a high protein diet. Never happened. They just released a study of bodybuilders in which study in which the bodybuilders, and I wrote about this in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, in which the bodybuilders consumed five times more than the suggested requirement of protein to build muscle, and there was no body fat accretion whatsoever. And yet that protein was undeniably stimulating insulin. So why does it, if protein stimulates insulin as much as, let's say, carbohydrates, why is it that people don't get fat from eating protein, but they get fat from eating carbohydrates? Clearly, there's a missing link in there somewhere, right? Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, also, another thing I want to mention is the fact that when they've done studies, dozens and dozens of studies, one after another, I just saw one the other day, when they compare a low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet to a low, high, I'm sorry, did I say, yeah, low-fat, high-carb diet, when it's compared to a high-fat, high-protein diet that's low in carbohydrates, the low-carb, high-fat, high-protein diet always, in every single case, proves superior to the low-fat, high-carb diet for, for purposes of reducing body fat and for increased fat oxidation. High fat, high protein, greater fat oxidation in every study. In fact, I just saw a study just the other day, which again, directly compared a low fat, high carb diet. To, and this is not people working out. This was average people. They were not involved in exercise. They were not bodybuilders. One group had a low fat, high carb diet. The other group consumed a high fat, high protein, low carb diet. The low fat, high carb diet people lost no weight at all. The people on the low, on the low, on the high fat, 
this gets it confusing. The, the people on the high fat, high protein, low carb diet, all lost body fat. And guess what? Both groups consume the same amount of calories. Now, my question to those who talk about how protein and carbohydrates, the effect on insulin the same, how do they explain that? They don't. Instead, they'll point to people around the world, for example, in Asian countries, who regularly consume a high carbohydrate diet and a moderate pro to moderate to low protein diet, and these people have no body fat. They're very lean. They consume a fairly decent amount of carbohydrates. Now, they, the the uh, the people that claim that insulin doesn't make you fat, they point to these people and say, now obviously they're eating a lot of carbohydrates. If carbohydrates made you fat. Why are these people so lean? Here's the answer to that question, which these people don't supply, which I'm going to supply. If you look at these people, first of all, they don't have a condition called hypertrophic hyperplasic obesity, which involves fat cells that are larger and that contain more fat than normal. They And because of that, they're basically not set up to gain a lot of fat. They probably have certain genetics related to fat enzymes that also set them up for not becoming obese. And furthermore, they stay lean all their lives. And as a consequence, they don't secrete large amounts of insulin when they eat those carbohydrates. So the carbohydrates that they do eat are likely used in physical activity. And that's the other side of the dimension, is the fact that these lean people in Asia and other places, they tend to be active and they burn off the carbohydrates. See, because it's a fact that, and this is again undeniable, Carbohydrate is stored in the human body in the form of glycogen in muscles and liver. Once those glycogen stores are filled, once they're filled with carbohydrate, the only fate of excess carbohydrate is to either be oxidized in the liver or through exercise, or if it's not oxidized, it's converted into a saturated fatty acid called palmitate, and it's stored as body fat. So the notion that excess carbohydrates don't cannot make you fat is utter nonsense. It's obvious all around you. All around. Look at all these people that eat processed carbohydrate. Now the the uh, the anti uh, the insulin uh, the insulin doesn't make you fat proponents. They would respond to that by saying the reason people get fat is not from eating excess carbohydrates. It's from a combination of excess carbohydrates and excess fat intake because when you eat a lot of carbohydrates and fat the fat is more or less not used and it's kind of pushed into fat stores there's a lot of truth to that there is a lot of truth to that but the point is though that and this is the part the point that I'm trying to make is that a lot of these people who who follow this type of uh, let's say high fat high carb intake they already have <laughs> They already have a good amount of body. All right, that's it, Chip. That's my dog. They already have Chip. No. They already have a good amount of body fat. Looks like the mailman's here, so you'll have to forgive my dog here. But anyway, they already have a good amount of body fat, and as a consequence, uh, they tend to. When you have a large amount of body fat, it, it causes a condition called. Well, it causes a fat buildup in the liver. It gets a little complicated. But let's just say that these people are, they, they, they tend to become what they call insulin insensitive. And when you're insulin sensitive, every time you eat carbohydrate, you kick out a lot more insulin than normal. The point about this is that when insulin is high, two thing, uh, when, when it's secreted in large amounts, two things happen. Either body fat is being synthesized or body fat is being maintained. Now think about it. Somebody who secretes, who over secretes insulin, when they go, when they consume, let's say a high carbohydrate, low fat diet, every time they eat that carbohydrate, they're going to be kicking out a lot of insulin. And if the calories go low enough on these diets, yes, they will lose body fat, but it's going to be a very slow, long, tedious process because that insulin they're secreting, that excess insulin, is maintaining their body fat stores. So they're going to have to go very low calories to lose any body fat. Most people don't have the willpower, which is why those diets always fail. Nine out of ten people can't follow them. Uh, so, you know... This is the missing element, though. The missing element 
uh, between you know between the argument between insulin makes you fat and uh, it's carbohydrates and insulin, blah blah blah. The 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 uh, the missing element that the people that talk about how insulin doesn't make you fat, they're overlooking the fact that insulin does play a role in a person that has already has excess body fat and already are secreting excess amounts of insulin. They're hyperinsulinemic when they take in carbohydrates. The, you know, the carbohydrates, because of the excess insulin, it's going to tend to be either made, the body fat is either going to be maintained or the di or the loss of body fat, unless they do a tremendous amount of, of exercise, is going to be blunted to the point of, 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 of nothing. So that's something to, uh, to keep in mind. My dog's barking is driving me crazy. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to end this right now. This is part one and part, and part two. Oh, I just want to sum it up by pointing out that uh, the, 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 the basic difference between the insulin doesn't make you fat, insulin makes you fat, is that it has to do with insulin insensitivity. Flat statement. If you have a, a fairly decent amount of body fat, the odds are you are insulin insensitive. And what this study show, if you're insulin insensitive, a low carbohydrate, higher protein diet, will work much better for you than a high carb low fat diet period i'm going to end it here now part 2 i'll be i'll be discussing the use of ergogenic aids i'm sorry insulin as an ergogenic aid and that's coming up uh, by the way uh, I, I strongly suggest you subscribe to my applied metabolics newsletter at www.appliedmetabolics.com where i go into a lot more detail about these type of subjects and uh, tremendous, it's, it's 40 to 50 pages of pure information, no advertisement. So I'm going to end this video now, right now. Part two, I'll be discussing the ergogenic use of, er, of insulin, all the myths, does it really build muscle? Uh, what about these bodybuilders using growth hormone, insulin, and steroids? We'll talk about that in the next video. Take care.